Hello, it's Sarah from Midnight Butterfly Designs and today I'm going to teach you how to make a red lace wing butterfly. You're going to need four colours of clay, burnt umber, red cadmium, black and white. I'm also going to be using my standard tools of an acrylic roller, an X-Acto knife, a needle tool and a flexible blade. Off camera I'm also using a pasta machine for those pesky Skinner blends. So the first step is to create a Skinner blend between the red and the brown to create depth. So I'm going to roll out the brown and the red on the thicker setting. Then I'm going to cut them into the shapes to fit the Skinner blend. And I worked this out the other day and it's such a silly thing to work out but I figured out if you folded the clay in half you didn't have to stack the clay later to make a double layer. So that's what I did here, which is why you saw me folding it. It just seemed like a really quick hack. Just be careful that you don't trap any air between the layers of clay because that can be problematic later. As you can see here, the brown triangle is going to be a lot shallower than the red triangle. And that's because we just want to use the brown as a little bit of colour on the inner part of the wing. We don't actually want to take away the vibrancy of the red. If you look at a picture of a red, lacewing butterfly, the red is really quite punchy. Next I'm really going to push the two pieces together. The last thing that you want in a Skinner blend, especially if you're making this with a pasta machine, is to run it through the pasta machine and the clay pull apart from one another. So you really want to make sure that that join is really really secure. Once you've done that, run it through the pasta machine on the thicker setting and you'll have a sheet that looks something like this. Then you want to fold it from top to bottom and run it through the pasta machine again. Do this repeatedly, probably 20 times, and you'll get sort of a blend that starts to come through. You can do this with a roller as well. It will take more time though. So I do highly recommend you invest in a pasta machine if skin and blends are your thing. So as you can see here, the brown is starting to come in to the red and it's starting to blend across. It's not quite blended fully yet because you want a smooth transition between the red and the brown. This is the finished blend. You can blend it more. You can always sort of fold it slightly on the huh um, so that you get more of a blend, but this is enough for the, what we're doing today. So I'm gonna make it into a tape by folding it roughly into sort of a thin rectangle. Try and get it so that it's the same width all the way down because then you're going to get a nice long even tape that you don't have to cut later. I push it down with a roller because I'm trying to get the air out. Um, I will show you how to get rid of some air bubbles later. But you kind of want to push it so that the air comes out either end of the tape before you put it through the pasta machine. So once you're happy with the size and width of your tape, you're going to put it through the pasta machine on the thicker setting. Then um, I tend to cut them in half because they get quite long when you put them on thinner settings. And I spotted a air bubble. So the way that you get rid of an air bubble is just cut into it very gently and then squeeze it like a spot. And once all the air is out, you can then push the clay back down and it will look as if there was never an air bubble there. But it's better to deal with them now rather than in the cane. So run that piece through the pasta machine on a thinner setting. I went one setting higher than I usually do. I went on a four because I wanted a smoother gradient between the red and the brown. But just be really careful because the clay is really delicate when it's really thin. This red piece can go through the pasta machine at a thicker setting. Don't worry about the scraggly ends because we're gonna use them as an indicator or one of the indicators to tell us which end the cane is which size is the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to cut this piece into three centimeter segments and then I'm going to stack the segments from top to bottom. So clay can sometimes adhere to surfaces and the best way to get clay off without distorting the shape is to use your tissue blade by pushing it into the glass surface and just scooping underneath the clay to pull it away from that surface. When I did 
did there with the X-Acto knife was just mark the lighter side so that I knew I wasn't going to add any more clay to that side. But that's also where the messy ends come in because if you folded the messy end you know that that is the end of the caney, you're not going to start randomly sticking slices on that side. So with this second part of the tape, we've cut it into threes again. We know which side we're going to put the clay on, so that's where I'm going to put it. And you'll notice at the end of this, I have a two centimeter piece. Now we're not going to throw that away because, you know, Primo is expensive. So we're actually going to cut a one centimeter piece off this top part. And we're going to make it up. The great thing about clay is its versatility. I really love how even if you make a small mistake, you can rectify it quite easily with clay. You just have to know the techniques. And I think sometimes it's helpful for us to share some secrets. So this is one of mine. It doesn't have to be perfect. In a gradient cane, you really don't have to have perfection. You can sort of make it up as you go along. If you've seen some of my other videos, you will have seen that you can make these blocks from cutting it up like this or even for making a concertina and the concertina isn't very accurate but sometimes it comes up with a better gradient because you want it to be a little bit messy so you'll see here the completely finished gradient block and it goes from light to dark and that's what we want but we want a lot more red on that block so i rolled out a thickness of red uh, on thickness setting one of my pasta machine and what I'm going to do is almost like we did the tape before, I'm just going to cut it into pieces so that we can stack it on the bottom of the cane. We're going to add quite a bit of red to this because the butterfly does have quite a big, big red section and we're going to need it for both the top and the bottom wing. It almost seems like the brown is a little bit superfluous to our needs but actually it will just add a little bit of depth otherwise your butterfly can come out looking a little bit cartoony. Now all I'm doing is shaping the block and I'm using a roller, I'm using my hands just to push down the layers just to make sure that all the clay is adhered, we don't have any air bubbles and that when we start using the block in a wing it won't come apart. And you want to cut it in half want a slightly bigger piece for the bottom wing than you do the top wing. Put the bottom piece aside and we're going to be working on the top wing. The first thing to do is to shape it and this is going to be in sort of a triangle shape with the point being where the brown area is because that's going to be the closest bit to the body and then the wider area being toward the outer wing where we're going to add the black and the white. It's very easy to shape clay, but take it slow, don't force it, and the cane won't distort, and you'll still have that lovely sort of brown shape. There's an indentation toward the back of this particular shape, as you will see. Um, it's just the way that the butterfly sort of, some of the black sort of interjects into the, into the red. So just be careful when you're shaping it. I would suggest using a reference um, and you can use a blade as I did there to make the point where it meets the wing really really sharp. Now that we're happy with the shape, we're just going to draw on some areas where we're going to add some interest in the wing. This is hard to narrate, so apologies if you get lost, but do just follow what my hands are doing. Basically, I'm sketching um, where I want dots to appear on the wing. If you look at a real red lace wing butterfly, they do have a couple of specks within the red area, so it's important to sort of honour that within this wing. So I've cut a slice or a couple of slices through the wing where I want the particular dots. Now, the dots are not completely spherical, obviously we want it to look 
organic, almost like smudges within the wing. So I'm going to try and create them so that they're not a dot. To do this, I'm going to shape the element that we're going to insert into the wing first by cutting, um, then I use my needle tool just to create sort of a, a valley down the length of the um, black. Then insert a very small snake of red, and this almost makes sort of a, the black look like a smiley face, because the red will blend with the rest of the wing once it's inserted. Now the best advice I'd give you for inserting anything into a, a main cane where you want to give it shape, where you want to give it a different, like you don't want it to be a straight line, is to shape the outer edges. Don't necessarily shape the element too much, but shape the outer edges of the cane that you're inserting the colour into. When you reduce, the outer edges will dictate how the inner part reduces. So if you have, say, something that is circular in there, you want to really make sure that when you put it in there there weren't any square sides because that will distort the dot. So once you've popped your element in there, the little black smudge, be really careful and line up your cane again and put it back together. Taking a cane apart is absolutely fine as long as you remember which way the clay went the first time. So we're going to insert another bit here and um, I sort of want this to be a smiley face between two sides so I very gently create a, a sort of valley in one side of the clay and using the needle tool I sort of push into the clay but also upwards and this sort of creates a little bit of a gap. I highly recommend these tiny little knitting needles. They're really really good for clay but you could use um, a toothpick if you don't have one. So we're going to make the same or similar cavity on the other side by pushing the needle tool into the cane and then upward. And then we're going to insert some black. So all we've done is uh, rolled out some black on the thickest clay setting, cut out a little piece and stuffed it into one side. We're then going to trim it approximately and put the other side on. Again, be really careful when you line up the cane so that it matches. If you find that your cavities have been too deep, you can fill them with more black. That's not a problem. Butterflies have variation after all. So I'm just being really careful here so that I don't lose that sort of smiling shape that I was going for. And we'll find out at the end whether it actually worked. So on the top of the wing, there are some little bits of black that sort of bleed into the red. It's probably the best word I can use to describe it. So we're making more cavities into the top using the needle tool and the X-Acto knife so that the black can sort of bleed in around the red. So you want to make them increasingly bigger. Small little ridges from the brown side to slightly deeper ridges toward the back of the red side and you want to do it so that it's all the way along the top and then there's a few little ones down the side. There's a couple of ways to fill in the gaps. You can use the sausage technique where you're using really thin snakes of black to fill in the gaps and I would suggest that you use that technique for the smaller gaps. For the larger gaps you can either make bigger sausages or you can run clay through the pasta machine on a thicker setting and insert it that way. Works really well for sort of wiggly lines and sort of the thinner stripes, not so much for the bigger stripes. So just use the techniques that you're happy with.
once you're happy with the black give it a little shape it's always good to keep the shape of the wing consistent throughout making the cane but if there is a little distortion then just bring it back to what you wanted it to be it's not going to harm it so next we are going to insert some snakes of black along the edge we're going to use the needle tool to make little ridges first and then we're going to build up the black using the sausage technique there's a section of black alongside that wing and it doesn't smoothly transition into the red which is why we did the needle tool and put little sausages in first gives it a more organic change from red to black. You want to slowly build up the black areas. Now there is a thickness on the top as well, so don't neglect that. And just build it up very slowly from little snakes of black clay. I use this technique a lot because it is really easy to control the depth of the clay within the cane and sort of the shape as well. But when it gets to thicker areas, I do like to sort of skip a few steps as it were and uh, sort of fashion a really fat bit of clay out just to bulk out the shape. I am very careful though. I do try and make sure that um, the shape is what I want it to be and I'll only use a bit of filler if I know that I'm going to use a bit more sausage technique afterwards. So just be careful. So now we're going to be inputting some ridges into the black clay that we have just put together. And this is because it transitions into white. And again, you don't just want a sharp line between the black and the white. So I'm adding some ridges in so that we can put some very small snakes of white clay into those ridges. And it will sort of be an organic transition between the red, the black and the white. The next thing is to really build the white area using little snakes of clay. You want to have a look at your reference picture for this because you don't want to build it too deep and you don't want to build it in the wrong way. For instance, it doesn't have the same thickness all the way down. There's a little bit of white at the top but it's quite thin and then it goes into sort of two mounds with a valley in between. Now we're going to put some black in that valley in between but you want to make it a little bit more defined so I use my needle tool, I put a little bit more white in there and just really pushed it and really packed it. If you pack a cane right, when you reduce it, it will retain the shape that you originally intended. So I really try and push the clay in there. And once you're happy with the white shape, you then want to go and add the black sausages around the edges of it. Again, building it up slowly um, and trying to create sort of an organic barrier between the white and the black. Now there is a lot of black in the top quarter of the wing so I'm just building that up here with the sausage technique and you can sort of see how the wing shape is going to uh, look afterwards. So I'm really trying to build up that top corner with black and we're just going to use uh, the sausage technique for that. And then we're going to shape it. Be really gentle with your shaping, try not to distort any part other part of the clay. One thing that I do use to flatten my cane sometimes is just very gentle very light use of the acrylic roller along the top of it, nothing more. So around the edge of the black we need a few little white bits. We don't need a lot, just a little bit. The gaps between the white I'm just going to fill with black. Again we're going to do it in the same way that we've done everything else with the sausage technique. The next thing we want to do is wrap that black area with a nice sheet of black. I do this for a couple of reasons, sometimes it just gives a really nice edge, especially if you do it all the way around the wing, but it can look a little cartoony, especially on these brighter um, and more contrasting canes. So I just do it a little bit into the red, not very far, 
and then just around the edge of the wing here. So I've rolled this out on the thicker setting. You stick it around the edge very gently and then just remove the excess. I'm putting a second layer of the black around the edge because I want the thickness around the edge of the wing so there's quite a bit of black around the edge of the wing we're going to add a little more detail to it than just the black wrap around but at the moment we just need the thickness of the black so the edge of this wing has some lovely little ridges where it sort of goes in and it's a lovely white and black line so all I'm doing here is creating these lovely little ridges around the black with the needle tool then I'm gonna take some white run it through the pasta machine on a relatively thin setting I used a three and then put it within the ridges but we're gonna try and get that sort of gap in there as well so I've used the needle tool just to push that in and really make the ridge continuously there I'm gonna do this for all the ridges it's gonna make it look a little bit weird to start with but when you put the black into the ridges again it looks really really pretty really pretty once you've done that you want to roll out some snakes of black clay and you want to fill those gaps Once you've filled in the gaps you want to wrap that area with another length of black clay. Again it's run through the pasta machine on a 3 setting and I just line it up with the cane so that I can cut it to the width that it will be and then I just wrap it round uh, trimming the edges where I need to. Next we're going to create ridges where the original ridges were and again we're going to add really thin lengths of white clay into those areas. This is going to create like a double white upside down smile along the edge of the wing. It's going to look really really pretty. Once you've put the white in you want to roll out some sausages of black and just, um, just fill those ridges with some black. Make sure the wing is the shape that you'd like it. So Next is the bottom wing and we're going to whiz through this because we've already done the top wing and it's basically the same. The first thing you're going to do is add some more red to the bottom of your stack because this particular wing is mostly red which is why you wanted a bigger stack to begin with but you want to add some more red and sort of create a teardrop shape, a really big teardrop shape for this wing. So just keep adding red when you need to. It doesn't really matter if the blend doesn't work quite as you needed it to. You just need the brown on that little triangle. So just give it a good shape. As I say, clay is really forgiving, really forgiving, really malleable. Um, you can make any shape you want. Just make sure that it's gonna be roughly the same size as the wing that you've already got. The next thing is to make some dots around the wing, around the edge of the wing. I use my needle tool just to go all the way through. Make sure that you look after the front and the back of the cane as well and create holes that are roughly the same size. 
and then all we're going to do is we are going to roll some black sausages and we are going to cut into the main wing and insert all these sausages. Once you're happy with the dots, the next thing we're going to do is roll some black out on a 3 setting on our pasta machine, which is relative, somewhere between thin and medium. And then we're going to wrap the outer wing with that strip of black. We're going to start building the layers up on the outside. It's very similar to the top wing um, in that there is sort of a double smile effect on the bottom of the wing. So we need to build that up, but first we need to do the black. So I'm going to put the edge on the black. We're going to do this a couple of times to create that thickness and then we can start building the bridges. So the next thing to do is create those ridges using your needle tool. I also, because these ones were quite deep, I used the edge of my X-Acto knife, which is quite a big ridge. Um, and so I could create real big ridges with the depth. The ones on the bottom are much more noticeable than the ones on the top wing, so, you know, go nuts. Add the thin slices of white, and don't forget to curve them by using the needle tool or end of a paintbrush or pencil, whatever you're going to use. Next we're going to add the black sausages into the ridges that we made with the white. Then roll out some black clay on a 3 setting and wrap the area that you've just put black and white on. It's just going to give it another thickness of black around the edge so that when we put in our second layer of white smiles we've got something to play with. So give it a good shape and then put in some more ridges uh, over the top of the ones that you've already done so that we can have that double smile effect. So then insert your strips of white. Again, these were run through the pasta machine on a three setting. They are relatively thin, but really easy to use. And then insert some more sausages of black into those ridges. Exactly the same technique that we used for the top wing. Once you're happy with those smiles, give the bottom wing a bit of a shape. These little smiles are actually going to act as a bit of a guide when we make the butterfly so that we know where to sort of create those spikes that you can see on the edge of the wing. You can obviously use the cane as is as well um, because those little ridges give the illusion of those spikes. And there you have it. Congratulations, you've made your very own red lace wing butterfly cane. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I tried to keep it as simple as possible so that people who are less confident with caning could really give this one a go. I'd love to see your creations, please post links in the comments um, to your Instagram, to your Facebook, wherever the pictures are, just show me what you've made. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Um, I hope to create many more videos in the weeks and months to come. Until next time guys, happy claying!